Back in the early days of scouting, we had a unique experience here in New York State, is where uh, Kanawaki Lake is. Bear Mountain, Harriman State Park, Sterling Forest, and Tuxedo Park make up a uh, run of about 17 miles of uh, wilderness. Palisades Interstate Park was partly given by John D. Rockefeller with Mrs. Harriman, wanting to honor her husband, Edward Harriman, who was an early uh, New York politician, gave the land for Harriman State Park. Fair Mountain was already in existence. And so these two parks made up Palisades Interstate Park, Sterling Forest, and Tuxedo Park were annexed to the parkland, and it run by the Park Commission. In uh, 1915, Brooklyn Council was looking for a place to go camping for the boys, and they're the ones that actually started with the uh, Palisades Interstate Park. By 1919, they had gotten together with other uh, councils in New Jersey and the rest of the five boroughs in New York and Westchester County to promote got camping to Palisades Interstate Park. The main goal that they were trying to do was have as many kids go to camp as they possibly could. Their goal was like I have 100 councils putting 100 boys in camp every summer. While the actual number of councils wasn't 100, one has to remember that this started off with 28 camps, expanded to 44 camps, and then by the time 1926 came around, there were up to 68 different camps being utilized. And that's just on the southern part of the uh, reservation. There's, there's a highway that runs through the uh, Harriman State Park, Route 6, and everything above the Route 6 is girls, not only girl scouts, but the uh, YWCA, the church group, a number of different corporations, Macy's, sent their families there for camping during the summer. A lot of the big companies did this. So in 1919 is when the Jersey Council started getting uh, heavily involved with the Scott Camp here at Harriman State Park. This year, they, well, the first picture I had before was a, uh, for the 1920 brochure. And then the second one here is for the 1921. This is promoting loan troops. New Jersey had a number of second class council, second class council to those that do not have got executive. So they have to go up under a program, a camp director that's existing in a camp. And so that's what these loan group camps were for, for those that didn't have the good leadership. If you look at the map on the right hand side, it shows you a couple ways of getting up the camp. If you look up this line here, that's the Hudson River. And the most popular way for the most of the kids from New York to go camp, taking the riverboat ride up the river, the Bear Mountain Landing, hiking into camp or taking the camp bus that took you into camp. The other way was following the railroad and going up into Tuxedo and then having to hike or take the bus in from uh, Tuxedo into camp. And then, like I said before, if you're lucky not to have your own family car, you could drive up there. What's pretty amazing is that you know, even though the Transportation kind of crude as far as we know it for 1919 through 1926 when it was at its heyday. They had 100,000 kids going to camp here and they had almost 700,000 visitors in, during camp. Most of the camping periods were two week periods. So, you know, people would come up for the middle weekend. The, the board was made up for the Boy Scouts of 13 councils. There were a lot more councils involved in going to camp there. There were 28 councils in 1926. There were 32 Girl Scout councils. Uh, while the Boy Scouts were moving out in the late 20s, early 30s, the Girl Scouts stayed around till the 50s when they started to reorganize. And there were some Girl Scouts that were there until 2004. While the, all the camps had dining halls, a lot of them did not have cooking facilities. The hot meals were made out of the Bear Mountain Inn, which still exists today, where they had 68 operational camps in 1926. They served 77,000 meals. Camp Fencer is the existing camp, and then if you look at the, all the red lines, the red writing, those are all the camps that they put in that were not permanent camps at the time. They made some camps so we could fit more people into camp. 
if you get a be little better detail picture, if you look at the camp over here on the right, on the top of the middle of Kanawaki, the, those were all Brooklyn Council camps. They had six or seven camps that they filled to capacity. Uh, Manhattan was over here. Bronx was up in here. These were all the New Jersey camps. Some New York ones down here. Uh, this is a typical flyer to try and... Uh, generate interest to go into camp. And uh, this one for Monmouth Council, 1919. Often times, you know, if we couldn't fill a camp, you chair the camp. 1920, 20 or 21, this one had Monmouth, New Brunswick, and Plainfield sharing Camp Ram Ramapo. Like I said, these were different promotional uh, aids. Uh, now, we we're talking about the riverboat ride up the Hudson River. You can see two boats that came in the dock at Bear Mountain Landing. Now, you have to climb, this is down the river, so now you have to climb up over the mountain to get up into camp, hike over to see your transport into camp. It's pretty interesting. Just the logistics to having 10,000 people in camp in the 1920s, you no. Know, no, it's pretty mind-boggling. I don't know, I guess I'm giving my age away. If you remember having to do Morse code for first class, that was the big tumbling block in the old days for first class bed. We were doing Morse code. Eventually, we'll wait for you everywhere in camp. A scout made bridge to, took you out to the uh, Ahika Island, which is the, the sea scout camp. If you didn't have a boat to get out there, then this is one of the many waterfronts with seven lakes at this facility. They had competition down the lake with the camp. You can see two of them across the lake. There's competition on the lake and then in between the lake. So there was a lot going on with activity. This is one, a typical dining hall. This is for Caladina. In 1923, they had the national meeting we held here at Bear Mountain uh, Inn. You notice the guy up here in the right-hand corner. That was uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. He had not yet been elected governor of the state of New York. He was a staunch supporter of the Boy Scouts. In 1928, he became governor of the state of New York. And then, of course, 1932, he became president. Bob Gordon, uh, the big name for this camp, he was the camp director for 10 years at uh, this camp, was largely responsible for developing, the, going from 28 to 68 uh, campsites in the camp. When New York decided to go up the 10 Mile River, start developing up camp there, he took over that job. And then after uh, he got in the 10 Mile River uh, up and running, he was moved on to be uh, the chief national BSA engineer. He was responsible for the layout for 35 and then the 37 National Jamboree in Washington. And then you can see here, not one accident during 10 years. Red Cross was uh, the biggest uh, adversary for uh, having staff in camp. So they had all kinds of uh, skilled instructors for swimming in your, in your boating. One of the big things that they had at the uh, at Kanawaki Lake was having a scout museum. And you can see in the actual museum, one of the um, highlights coming out of the museum was the newsletter. Camp here was for uh, nine weeks every summer. So there's nine weekly issues. And they're all full of pretty good information about your plant life, your animal life, stories, and contributions from other uh, people in camp. It, while you were at the museum, you could earn some patches. The top left one is the museum major, and the, top, uh, the ones on the right were all minors. You could get awards for different areas of nature. You didn't have to be do all of them. If you did 25 tree species or 25 different plants, no, you can see the list here. Here's an example of what Brooklyn offered for the same time period. These are all New Jersey music, uh, councils um, use this particular design. I have not been able to verify that a New Jersey council actually offered the museum major, but where I got the pop from was from a person that was at Tawadina. Two more examples of the book. Some of the earliest images for camp taxi. Uh, this is Kanawaki Lake that they used when you didn't have your own particular camp path. Um, you were able to use the, uh, the, the camp, their camp path. The requirements were the same for everybody. 
Um, the individual camps, they develop their own emblem, you know, have their own requirements. I have two examples of Vahika from the 1930s. The beanie that I'm wearing is supposedly from 1928. I have not been able to verify the actual year yet, but it definitely came from Kanawaki Lake while they were there. Camp Koa, this is, Camp Koa moved out of here in 1939, opened their camp in 1940. Everybody used to seeing the orange background with the green tree. That started in 1940, and those were stuck green. Later on, they were three-piece felt. The tree was one piece of felt, the tree was the second piece, and then the background was the third. The next one is Mohican. This is uh, their path from 1926. The uh, 1925, the name that you might recognize, George Bamberger, owned Bamberger's uh, clothing stores that merged in with Macy's. Or Peter Ballantyne, Ballantyne Brewery. He moved with uh, another company, uh, Samuel Kretzky. He in uh, Woolworth with your big five and dime stores. And they all got together and bought a hunting ground up near the Delaware River. They sold the property to the Boy Scouts for one dollar with the instructions that they'd be able to go hunting during hunting season. And then uh, this is Camp Wachung uh, from 1920. Uh, you'll recognize the PW because Watchung went on to use that in a different color format for the 1930s when they moved up. Uh, they moved out of Kanawaki Lake to 1927, opened their camp in 1928. Camp Taradina, these are two, I probably have a dozen different examples. There's some with a number of different stars, some of them with numbers one through seven. There's the moon and the sun. Now, this is just a sample of what I have. I have many passages from New Jersey, all from the 20s and 30s. Uh, this is, uh, just gives you a little overview of the main camp that came out of Palisade, the five camps. These are the camps that uh, Harvey Gordon uh, all got started for Ten Mile River. Then uh, Camp Chappagat for Tenaway Council in uh, Westchester County, and then New Jersey. Um, these are the camps that carried the name down to New Jersey before camp moved out. And then other camps that uh, other castles that started in New Jersey in the park for New Jersey were Bayonne, Carlstadt, which is second class castle, Central Union, Hoboken, Irvington, Monmouth County, New Brunswick, North Hudson, Orange, Passaic, Perth Amboy, Plainfield, Rawway, South Orange, Tenafly, Union, West New York. You can see there were a lot of different camps. They were up there at the Palisades Interstate Park. Here's some postcards just to give you some of the idea of what the layout looked like. The main headquarters for the Boy Scout camp up at the lake. So if you were at the Boy Scout camp, they, this is where your central headquarters was. And then there's some postcards. I found that, you know, in doing history on the old camp, whether it was Scout or Boy Scout, that the postcards were my easiest avenue to finding what what existed back in the day. Many of the camps don't have any real history written on them, or the Girl Scouts did not exist because they want to keep the location private, so you know, there wasn't any, much written about them. Then in 1927, it, at the uh, uh, Kanawaki Lake, the 1927 OA National no meeting was held at Camp Ranaqua. There was a host, uh, Ranaqua Lodge Number Four. Mr. Goodman there giving us the, giving the guys to speak. As the camp developed, the roads were improved and there was more transportation available. The dining halls all looked the same with different names on them. I don't know whether I'm getting the same pictures with them changing the name or they just used the same floor plan and built all the dining halls. I haven't been able to uh, verify that. Every summer, we like we still do today. The camp inspection done by the region, and here's the the region doing the uh, the camp inspection up at Wakur. We talked about uh, badges having to be earned uh, back in the day. Um, this is the only real write-up I could find that told you about what you had to do to earn different badges. In Brooklyn's case, this is the four pieces right here to earn. And the, the TP was one, the canoe was second, the half moon was third, and then the book 
different name underneath with the four. So they had different uh, ways to do it. We also talked about the camp belt. The same thing with here. These are all awards on the belt. Every time you earned an award, you got a chance to stencil in your belt. Your belt was the best way to kill off. Now, in 1926, you can see this. 76 mail badges were offered in camp for the Brooklyn camp. That's pretty incredible. Now, they had eight camps. There were nine camps, so there were plenty of, plenty of things you could earn besides just going swimming every day. They went swimming three times a day. You went swimming in the morning uh, before breakfast. You went swimming before lunch. And you went swimming before dinner. 